Hey guys, it's Jeff. Uh, just a quick video for you. This one's going to be on the PSA Jackal. Stay tuned. All right, guys, thanks for checking out this video. Like I said, it's on the PSA Jackal. But before I get started, before I get into the gun itself, I do want to ask for your help. If you like this kind of content, you like what I'm doing, and you want to help some support a small creator, likes, subscribes, comments in the comment section are always uh, helpful. They tell the people that you know make these kinds of products that you like getting your kind of content on YouTube and on Rumble. Uh, if you don't follow me on Rumble, please consider following me on Rumble. There'll be a link in the description below to find me over there. Rumble is a much better free speech platform. It doesn't have the traction that YouTube has, but it is something that we should support where we can. I put all of my content on Rumble, so if you want to start following me there, please check them check it out over there as well. So uh, with that said, going to be going to Shot Show coming up in a couple of weeks. If there's any content you want to see from SHOT Show, let me know that and I'll try to make a point of bringing you that content while I'm there. And um, so with that, let's get into the gun. So what do we got? We've got a long stroke gas piston modern sporting rifle upper that fits onto AR-15 lowers. There's a lot to unpack there. Just kind of starting with the front of the gun here, we do have an A2 birdcage flash hider. This is a uh, 4150V chrome molly steel barrel with a one in seven twist. Uh, it has a half by 28, so if you want to put your chemo uh, suppressor mounts on there or whatever, you can do that as well. Um, the front trunnion is 8620, if that matters to you. And the front trunnion is where the gas adjustments are at. So if you're running a little over gassed or a little under gassed and you want to make that adjustment, you will find that there. You can fit the tip of a bullet in there to use it to gain a little leverage. Uh, but uh, I think it's only a couple of settings on that. Read your manual if you get this. Uh, it'll have it in there. I think it's three or four. Um, so continuing to move back, you'll know notice one of the things here this is a solid monolithic upper the upper is a 4150 aluminum uh, solid block of, of aluminum that has been milled out to um, provide you with the solid piece that you're looking for so if you want to run a red dot all the way up at the end like a goofball you can do that not a problem right but um, at any rate you're not going to have a lot of shifting of impact the barrel's gonna not impact where your sighting system's at. Unlike on an AR-15 where you do have a break, you don't have a break on the on the uh, PSA Jackals. If that matters to you and that's an important feature for you, hey, here you go. Um, so one of the things I do wanna talk about, you know, who's the Jackal for, right? This is a weird name, J-A-K-L. Uh, what is the purpose of the Jackal? Um, well, the AR-15 has had a long and storied career. So has the AK-47. And in the industry, you know, people are always looking at ways to eke out a little bit of a improvement for the next generation firearm. And so a couple years ago, a couple of decades ago, they started marrying the piston driven operating system to the modern sporting rifle in the, in the um, 5.56 cartridge style. Uh, and in the 308, you saw it with the, uh, the ACR, and now you're seeing it with the SCAR. So you got the 308, the 556, you've got other calibers. Um, so the piston driven is not new to the AR-15 style, you know, the smaller caliber style rifles. Uh, guys, have, you know, companies have been doing it for a while now. With the notoriety that the SCAR has brought, uh, people want that you know, they want to start trying that kind of gun. They want to start trying that sort of operating system, but they'll find that there's a barrier entry and that's your wallet, right? So PSA has, has identified that as a potential problem. And they said, Hey, we can do this. We can do this for a relatively reasonable price for those that want to get into a piston gun. We can develop this and we can bring it to market for a price that the average consumer can afford. And that's why 
they ended up creating the jackal that you see before you. So I wanted to get that little bit of a conversation out of the way. Why is the PSA exist? Um, there are people that want a piston driven gun. Like I said earlier, the benefits in the uh, lack of a buffer tube or buffer uh, you know, cycling in the back is one. Uh, they run a little bit cleaner because all the gases stay up here. The piston drives the carrier, not um, not the gases going all the way back like on the AR-15. So some people like that. You know, your mileage may vary if this if this is uh, something that's for you. You probably already have this, or this is on your short list of guns that you're looking at, and uh, you're you're probably already familiar with that why it exists. But if you're just kind of happening across this video and you're curious why do guys want to get piston driven and guns that's some of the background so anyway just kind of moving around continuing um, you see so you've got a forward charging handle I'm not gonna cycle the gun because it is loaded uh, but uh, you see you have a forward charging handle and it is reversible so if you want to take it out and I'll, I'll probably show that here in a second where I'll take it down and show you some of the internals on it, it is kind of interesting um, but continuing to move back you have a a, a QD point here on the M lock rail that is M lock on three sides bottom top and left and right I'm sorry, bottom and left and right, not top. Obviously, Picatinny all the way around. Uh, it's full swivel here on the handguard, and you also have a QD point back here, so if you run it in a pistol uh, configuration, you wanna throw it underneath the jacket or something, you can have it slung. Single point sling or two point sling, but uh, two to one. So you can't carry it, say, under the arm or that sort of thing, you know, uh, kind of covert style. Um, continuing to move back, this is set up as a pistol, like I said, so it does have the SB Tactical folding brace on it. This one is not the best. I wouldn't necessarily uh, recommend this. This is the polymer one, so there's a little bit of flex there, and I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, it does take regular AR-15 lower type uh, grips, so if you want to replace it with your you know, favorite uh, pistol grip, you can. You want to go vertical, you want to go more of an angle. Uh, there's a different type of texture you like. You know, Hogue makes a good grip, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, this is compatible with that. So. That said, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, disassemble it real quick and I will be right back. All right guys, so as you can see, it's disassembled. I just pulled the two pins like on an AR-15. Really no big deal. Uh, very compatible with any AR-15 lower. I would point out that that does not move in any way. Obviously, there's nothing behind it. Uh, so there is a plug that I've heard that you can get um, if you wanna build your own lower for this purpose. Uh, there is a plug you can get for the back there. Uh, it does help with cycling. Not gonna go too far into that because I don't know a lot about it, but I have read about that on the internet, so I thought I'd bring it to you guys. Um, all right, so just a basic AR-15 lower, obviously without with that plug in the, in the back, but this is where all the magic happens. So this is the interesting piece so if you're just looking to get a you know PSA jackal or a PS if you're just looking to get a piston driven gun and you don't feel like you need a new lower uh, you can just pick this up this guy is where all the magic is happening anyway so I'm gonna try to show you back here what's going on but when you go to take this guy apart you will notice there's this little notch back here and you push that in you push that in and down and your spring comes out, your bolt comes out, and you will notice that it is got the uh, piston there. And then there's the upper assem or the assembly for the charging handle. That's a little bit of a, an annoyance. I can do a separate video on that altogether if you guys are interested. Um, but I'm not going to take that out right now because it is does take a little finagling to get back in. So I do want to talk about this real quick. You'll notice very similar to other guns you probably have. Uh, this is a large piece of metal with a piston on the end, but uh, this is where all the magic is happening, right? All your, all your combustion and everything is happening at the front of the gun up here by your front trunnion, which I showed you earlier, your front trunnion. So it's pushing, it's pushing from here to cycle your, I'm sorry, to cycle your gun, whereas on your direct impingement, it's pushing all the way back here and it's moving the gun, moving the bolt back there. So it does run a little bit cleaner. Uh, it is a little hotter. Now at the front here where the front trunnion is at, you will notice that there is a lot of heat that comes off of that when you're shooting this. So if you're, you know, doing clamshell, uh, you know, forward grips and that kind of thing, you will notice that heat coming off of there, just FYI. Anyway, very basic gun, uh, very simple technology here. This bolt is, um, you know, probably one that you've seen in other guns has a lot of similarities to other guns I own as well. Uh, typical 
bolt here, it's, you know, similar AR-15 bolt. I don't want to take it down any further than this on camera. I don't want uh, YouTube to bust my chops. But if you do want to see this disassembled and taken all the way apart, check me out over on Rumble. I, I can do a video and put it up over there. Just send me a message. I'm happy to do it on, on camera for you guys. Uh, but I did want to show that to you real quick. Now putting it back together, again, it's very basic. You uh, notice that it is keyed up here on your carrier. So there is a groove that you follow when you are reassembling it. Let's see if I can get this done on camera here. This is always fun trying to do things on camera. So you get it slid back in there, just like on an AK-47, you push your You push your, just like on the AK-47 I was saying, you push your uh, your spring back in there and then you just have to catch it. <sighs> Obviously can't do it on camera. Ah, I caught it. Okay, so you can see there, you just push it back in and it notches up into the, uh, the upper receiver here and it becomes uh, locked in place. It is captured, it's not gonna move. So then you, when you cycle it, you see here, I'll do it in reverse. I this is hard to do on camera, guys. That's what it looks like as it's cycling. So, anyway, that's it, guys. This is the PSA Jackal, a piston-driven AR-15 style modern sporting rifle for your piston needs. If you're looking for something that uh, will satisfy that itch and you don't have a lot of money to spend check out the PSA Jackals really good gun um, Haven't had any problems with it at the range It's hard to do mag dumps on video, but I try to do as much as I can for you guys So so all right, so it's all back together So if you like this kind of content like I said throw me a like subscribe share with your friends If there's something else that you want to see with this gun throw a comment in the comment section Happy to do follow-on videos with these guys anything that you've seen on my channel If you want to see follow-on content with those uh, particular items, please let me know and I'm happy to uh, To get that going for you. Hopefully I'll see you at SHOT Show if you are not able to attend, attend this year Let me know if there's something you want to see happy to go check it out for you with that guy stay active stay safe stay vigilant and stay in the fight because the fight for your rights never ends. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.